Hi my friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Casper the Boy Diviner and I wanted to do a walkthrough of the Souling Tarot today. I got this deck in a giveaway that was held by the artist, Sarah. I'll put her, her Instagram handle here. I think it's at s.e.wands. But um, I'll just check and I'll just put it here so that you guys can check her out. I will also put the link in the description where you can get this deck. I won this deck quite a while ago, but it took a while to get here to me. I, I mean, everything the pandemic, I actually had to pay for shipping myself. Um, I think that was one of the rules of the giveaway. So I sent it to my mail forwarder and then sent it back to me. The deck comes in a little white tuck box that has no kind of branding on it, just a sticker. But that's pretty nice of her already because um, she, also, she also included a sticker and a little pin. I don't know how to use pins like this, these, I don't, I'm not really a big pin um, person. But anyway, from this sticker, I, I guess you can sort of tell uh, the style that she has. I am so tempted to just paste this on here, but I haven't done it. This deck is a very, I feel like it's a very strong feminine deck. Okay, pulling it out right now. Mm. This is the back of the deck. It has little, um, little pieces in the back. I don't know if you can see that. And I don't know how much of this, these glitter is supposed to be on the back and how much is because of the gilding that is um, sort of glittery. I'm not a fan of uh, gilding like this because I feel like every time I use it, some of it falls off into my hands. Uh, so I feel very wary about it. This giveaway deck is also one that has a bit of a glitch. The full card is glitched, but I feel like it does add to the art. I kind of wish that, um, you know, she kind of played it up. In any case, I do feel like she might be selling some of the, these glitch decks at a discount. So you can check, check her out on the site or check, check with her on Instagram DM. Hey, the fool. With the, the, the white flower and also the dog, which is really traditional. I like that the cliff is also here and that she is actually a bad ballerina in this picture. At the same time, I have never seen a ballerina with uh, heels as high as these, so I don't know. I guess this give, gives that sense of uh, imbalance or foolish um, foolishness in a way. The magician. This gives me more of a devil vibe. Um, and at the same time, I'm just looking for the traditional suits. But I think this is sort of not a traditional magician, so this is really interesting. Um, she does have an eye on her chest, which is um, really unique. I usually see third eyes on the head, so there's something about that. I'll also say that the magician is traditionally male, so in this deck, I think all of the male figures have become female figures. The High Priestess, you can see the colouring as well. The shades of uh, red, blue and then now green. Very Powerpuff Girls. Um, this is the High Priestess. The Pomegranate, which is really traditional. I like that. The Empress. With the butterflies. Honestly, I feel like these two cards could be differentiated a little better. I don't really see the Empressness in this Empress card. Again, this is my first impression, so I have not worked with the deck enough to uh, dig into the deeper layers. At the same time, this deck does not come with any kind of little white book to actually explain some of the uh, design choices here. So I, I, I guess a lot of this has to go with uh, my intuition. The Emperor. Oh, this looks like a male body, which I didn't expect. I, based on my impression of um, what I've seen online, this deck felt very... Um, like, it, it felt like it could be an all-female deck, but it's nice to see some representation here. At the same time, I have to say, this is quite irrelevant, but I really, really dislike this font. I'm so sorry. I, I have a feeling this font might be Pepperus, which is one of the, the fonts that I, I just can't stand. I kind of wish it was rest just at the bottom so I could trim it, but um, since it's on the banner, I can't do anything about it. It's okay, I can still live with it, it's just not my favourite font. This is also very traditional, I feel. All these symbols, the Ankh. So I do appreciate that. 
the Hierophant, I really love the mask of this Hierophant. This Hierophant is so cute to me. I really like this card. So far, out of all the cards I've seen, this is my favorite card. The Lovers. Ambiguous and yet uh, beautiful. I like ambiguity in the Lovers card. I really appreciate this one. I think the Children of Litha also has a really ambiguous uh, Lovers card. I, I like that a lot. The Chariot. One of my favorite parts of the Chariot. This is, one, this is my birth card, but... One of my favorite parts of the chariot is that there, there are two opposing forces that you're controlling. I don't see that here, I don't have that feeling here. So this is not a card that I really enjoy. Especially because um, there's something about this star here that feels very um, flat against the 3D nature of the uh, unicorn. You know? Strength. Pretty traditional. The hermit. I like this hermit card. I like how this person is turning away from us. I love the antlers. The Wheel of Fortune, I like this card as well. I feel like there's some sort of photo manipulation. I know she does a lot of uh, photography also on her Instagram. This makes me think of that uh, same photography. Justice. I like the body paint. The Hanged Man. This is a very interesting Hanged Man. This is a very, very interesting Hanged Man because I saw it as tearing out of reality and then now only now that I do see the, the body actually wrapped up and and instead of trying to free himself here he's been trying to tear some at something this is a very interesting card I I don't know what to make of it as of yet I do enjoy the art here death she's lying in a pool with uh, lilies I guess on the right and then on the left it feels like she's standing interesting there's the Ouroboros here with the Lemniscate within it. So I guess, you know, death is the beginnings and the ends. Like in the Cosmovisions, death is number zero, I think. Temperance. What I, again, one of the things I like most about the Temperance card is the mixing of uh, incompatible materials like fire and water. I don't really see that here. I do see the yin and yang. At the same time, yin and yang makes me think more about um, it doesn't bring to me the thought of temperance. So yeah, this is not uh, one of my favorite cards in this deck. The devil, this is very beautiful. I feel this is so interesting. The inky blackness with the mask here. I like this devil. I like the, the little symbology also um, on the left and right. Again, um, I really don't like saying symbology. I shouldn't be saying that. I should be saying symbolism. Yeah, the symbolism here. At the same time, it's the same criticism. They feel a bit flat. All these uh, symbols that are tagged on. The tower. Oh gosh, this is one of the most beautiful towers I've seen in a while. Um, I really enjoy like the one in the Folacost Tarot. I, I'll try to put it up somewhere here. Um, and this gives me the feeling of that Folacost Tarot splitting of who you are, your identity, something that changes this shows some a, a more fearful take of the tower i really like this tower this is one of my so far one of the standouts maybe i should be putting standouts here the cards that i like and anyway it's not important i i need to shuffle it all together later just to sh test uh the gilding um and also the card stop the star the moon i like the moon here the crying here reminds me of the Sasurai Bido Tarot. Um, but I really like the hole in the heart showing another scene. What, what, this, what this scene is, I don't know. The sun. Very interesting symbol here because there's the moon within the sun. I, I don't know what this is trying to express but I do enjoy the, um, the attempt at showing something new, you know. Judgment. The world. This is also very interesting. Usually I see the figure being the world. This is a face but the world is within the face. I guess how you perceive the world is your world, you know? Your perception of it is more important than the actual thing. And that's maybe what this card is trying to say. I, I, I like that interpretation here. Ace of Wands, a candle in the hand. Two of Wands. 
two candles. So I'm guessing candles is what she's using as the representation of wands. The three of wands. I do like this. I like the nudity in a way because you're putting yourself out there, you know? It's something uncomfortable. It's a new place. The four of wands. Oh, I love this. This reminds me of the Lion King. And this is beautiful. I didn't expect to see like animals. So this is a nice surprise. The five of wands. Conflict. The six of wands. Victory. The seven of wands. Lions are back. So there's the fiery energy I'm guessing. You know. This lion is fighting off another lion. Because there's only can, there only can be one lion in a pack or in a pride. The eight of wands. Arrows. The nine of wands. Clearly she has been wounded. There are bruises over her. Or on her. Ten of Wands, this is another standout, I think. This reminds me of another card in another deck, but I don't I can't place place it. The Page of Wands, beautiful. She's so cheery. The Knight of Wands is a lion. Again with the, the same symbolism, moon and sun. I probably have to do some googling. Queen of Wands. This is one of the cards that I always look at when I get a deck. This one in particular doesn't ring true to me in a way because I really always love to see a cat with the Queen of Wands. I'm biased in that way. I'm sorry, I wish there was like a lioness next to her or something. The King of Wands. The Ace of Cups. Traditional, the hand. I love how this hand is drawn. Two of Cups. Love. Between a butterfly, fairy, person, and uh, a demon, probably. The Three of Cups. Friendship. Although this is pretty ambiguous, you know. Four of Cups. So it seems like a lot of mermaids in the cup suit, which, which makes sense. The Five of Cups. I really enjoy this card. I, the sorrow in her face. How the... The wine is being spilled, you know. The Six of Cups, Childhood. The Seven of Cups, Choices. Not one of my favorite. Not, not, um, yeah. Eight of Cups, I like this card. I love the inky blackness. I, I wish, I wish this deck had more of this as a theme in a way. At this point in time, I really enjoy the art in the deck. I just feel like um, could be more. Uh, there could be a stronger theme since it's called the Soul Ink Tarot. I, it would be nice to you know see the ink in every single card in some way of shape or form. Nine of Cups. The Ten of Cups. Oh, I like this. I like the Ten of Cups here. Ambiguous figures in love are always one of my big points in the deck. The Page of Cups. This is a very cute Page of Cups because in the original Page of Cups in the RWS, there is a fish in the cup. So the page now is in the cup. The Knight of Cups, an animal. The Queen of Cups and then the King of Cups. That, 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 this is a creature that I need to research on again. I remember seeing it in Persona when I'm playing the game, but I can't remember what this, what's the name, you know, of these mer horses. Ace of Swords, interesting that she has two, two hands holding the sword here. Although the blade here seems to be shorter than the hilt. Two of Swords. Interesting. I like the ink again. Um, and the sim the symbolism of the moon still behind her. The Three of Swords. Um, not one of my favorite cards, just because the Three of Swords here kind of depicts a bit of uh, self harm in the sense that I, I don't really, I don't really associate with the Three of Swords. Four of Swords. Rest. I also don't really see the rest here. Maybe she's trying to express something different. It could be something uh, I can, uh, you know, work with. The Five of Swords. The Six of Swords. Yes, I like this ink here. She's moving on. She's using... 
she's 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 holding on to these swords they're sticking to her and she's trying to fly away the seven of swords a betrayal i really like the masks in this deck at the same time her crying it feels like a consensual kind of um deed when I mean, this probably wouldn't be consensual i also don't really see the seven of swords as some sort of betrayal all the time i wish there was more flexibility in this uh interpretation but I, I I understand where she's coming from and I do appreciate it. The Eight of Swords. I don't know what to say about this. Because usually I see the Eight of Swords as um you know they are bound and bound loosey and blinded. Uh, I'm not saying that everything needs to be exactly the same as the RWS of course. I'm just trying to take in the art and see what my visceral reaction is right now and Again, I have no, no real words for this. Interesting. The Nine of Swords. Very interesting because there is some sort of um, physical harm that has taken place here that I wouldn't really associate with the Nine of Swords usually. So this deck is really visceral. It, to me right now, the reactions I'm feeling, I don't know. And I, I appreciate decks that really push my comfort zone. Um, yeah, so I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel exactly right now. The Ten of Swords, again. You see, this is something like metaphorical. This, I don't know how I feel about it. It's very visceral. It's, and I guess, you know, working with something you're uncomfortable with will really help. At this point in time, I don't know. The Page of Swords. The Knight of Swords. Oh, these are the Pegasi, I guess. The Queen of Swords. And the first um, male, human-ish uh, court card. The King of Swords. Interesting. Okay, one more suit to go. The Ace of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles. I do like this card. Okay, I like this one. This, this is smart. And there are the ships behind also. The Three of Pentacles. This is so interesting. This is so interesting. This is so um, dragon... You know, dragons trying to keep their their eggs warm or trying to hatch their eggs. There's an unfinished quality to these dragons that I don't really mind, honestly. The Four of Pentacles. I guess th she's tapping into the hoarding nature of the dragons here, which I really like. I like this one. This this is very interesting. I like that one. The Five of Pentacles being left on the outs. Six of Pentacles. Interesting that she included the numbers here. It feels like an odd inclusion to me, but I do feel that that sense of exchange and the lack of, um, you know, I'm better than you, I'm poorer than you kind of feeling, which I appreciate. I like it being more equal. The Seven of Pentacles. There's something about her expression that I don't really know. I don't really know how I feel about it because Seven of Pentacles isn't usually like a sign of frustration or uh, impatience to me and I'm seeing that on her face. I usually see it as more um, just be patient uh, and watch your, the, your, your flowers bloom kind of feeling. I don't really see uh, this expression. It's very interesting. This, I feel like this deck is, can be a really good shadow deck, I guess. The Eight of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles. This reminds me of the, the Nine of Cups also somehow. And I really feel like how she laid out the pentacles here is very pleasing to the eye. The pen Ten of Pentacles. With a dog again. This is not how I see the Ten of Pentacles uh, in my readings, so it's really interesting. I like to see the Ten of Pentacles more as a kind of separation because there's that gate, you know. Page of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles as a dragon knight. Amazing, smart. The Queen of Pentacles with the dragon as well and the King of Pentacles which is the dragon. Very interesting. I like this king. Okay, let's put all the cards together and let's shuffle it. Let's see how how the gilding holds up. Okay, the, the deck shuffles really well. Um, I mean, it is to be expected because the cards are pretty glossy. Um, not my favourite type of card stock. You can see the gloss here. Um, I prefer something more matte as usual um, but because of the gloss it is easy to shuffle so I feel like that's more important than how it's... Uh, 
I, I don't know. I do like the feeling of some some forms of matte cardstock. I just really don't like the rose petal finish. Okay, let's try the before shuffle and see how it goes. Okay, it refers shuffles really well. Uh, okay, not, not really. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why that was that weird uh, sticking, but the car stock is okay. It's not too thick. It's definitely not too thick, which I appreciate. Let's see. One more time. And then we can do a little test reading. Okay, it's not too bad. Let's do a little test reading for everyone. Okay, I clearly didn't shuffle well enough, but once you have your first victory, you need to think about the next one, and that can really cause you some conflict. You know, your next goal. Appreciate the times you win, so that when conflict comes again, you know how to defeat it. Okay, think about your wins, think about how you have overcome adversity, so you can overcome the next one uh, with, with fresh ideas. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough of the Soul Ink Tarot. And you guys have a great rest of the day. You take care. Bye.